Today we're going to be building the default recommended hardware setup for the Dreamflight VTOL flight controller. This setup represents the least amount of soldering required to get you up and running with the default code as soon as possible. Uh, the default code supports six ESCs using OneShot125 protocol and seven servos or conventional ESCs using PWM. And we'll also take inputs from conventional PWM receivers or PPM receivers. And in the future, we look to release support for SBUS type receivers as well. For this assembly, of course, you'll need the TNZ 4.0, and I'll be using the GY521 breakout of the MPU 6050 IMU. And we'll also need 13 pin length, 3 pin angled male headers. We'll also need 11 pin length single male headers, 2 3 pin length male headers, and 2 2 pin length female headers. You'll also need some shrink tubing, uh, 4 wires of the same length for the IMU, and some extra wire. The first thing we're going to do here is solder those three pin angled headers from pin 0 to 12 on the left hand side of the board. And we're going to do that in such a way that two of the three pins hang out the side of the board. The reason for that is later we're going to be soldering all of those together for ground and power lines for all of the servos and ESCs. Now this is actually an old Teensy that I had to desolder, so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the pins in the board there. If you have a fresh board, these will slide right in, no problem. Uh, you just need to get creative and figure out a way to pin those in place while you solder the first few pins. Uh, one way that I like to do is maybe use a little piece of masking tape to hold it in place until you can get the first one, two, or three pins soldered. And then that whole rail is going to be pinned in place to finish off the rest of the soldering. So you can see I'm using a medium heat iron just using a little bit of solder after heating the, the pin in the uh, on the TNZ and the pin from the header. And once I get all of those done, I just go back and make sure they all have a good connection and it looks good. So as you can see also the two pins hanging out the side there, please take note of that. And again, that's from pin zero to 12. The next thing we're gonna do is grab that 11 pin single male header and slide that in to pins 14 to the three volt pin on the TNZ on the other side. And once that's slid in there, we're gonna flip the board over, solder it up the same way on all of those pins. Just make sure you have a nice clean connection on all of them and we're good to go. Next, we're gonna grab those two three pin male headers and slide those into the ground and five volt pins on the TNZ uh, and we're going to do that such that two of the pins hang out the side, similar to the angled headers on the other side. Once those are in there, just solder them up the same way. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. And you got to be a little bit careful because there's those pads there that might suck up the solder. So I might recommend approaching this from the other side. But a little solder sucker it takes care of that. Not short anymore. And what we're going to do with these later is just bridge those three pins for power and ground, and then we'll have extra pins to access for our receiver, IMU, anything else. Just to recap, we soldered the angled headers from pin 0 to 12, and the single headers from the 3-volt pin to pin 14, skipping pin 13, and we have those three pin headers soldered to the 5-volt and ground line. Next up, we need to connect all of the power and ground pins for the three pin angled headers. And the way we're gonna do that is a little bit unconventional. Some people might not like it, but um, like I said, this is just the simplest way to get this soldered up and running. So I'm gonna strip some 20 gauge wire here and pull a few strands away. And once I have those, maybe, maybe seven or eight strands, just twist those together enough to the point where they're not fraying and then we can solder those up so they completely stop fraying. And they also have a little bit of solder on them as well. And then we're gonna grab the board and we're going to take that uh, little bit of wire and bridge it across all of the outer outermost pins here. And I'm just gonna tack that in place on the first pin. And once I have that, I'm gonna to go to the other side on the last pin, tack that in place there as well. Now you might have to do a little bit of weaving uh, in and out of the pins just to get it to stay in place, but once you have that there, you can solder that last pin and then go back and solder all of the pins in between just so you have a good connection between all of those outermost pins. And this is gonna represent the 
ground line for these servos and ESCs. So you can see here, I'm just going through checking, make sure they all have a good connection. Looks good. So I can go in there with the X-Acto knife and just cut off the remaining wire on the end there. And now that entire line is soldered together. It's not pretty. If you don't like it and you have a better way, go ahead and do it your way. Um, this is just the way I do it. So I'm just going to follow that exact same process for the center pins. That's going to represent the power line, the 5 volt line. Get that looking nice and good. Check that for connection between all of them and cut off the remaining wire. We also have to do that for those three pins for the 5 volt and ground pins that we soldered to the other side. So following that exact same process, I'm going to uh, solder those three pins together. And what this is doing is just giving us access to uh, plug in more devices that might need power. So your receiver, your IMU need power, and you also need input power. So this allows you to just plug it directly into the Teensy. Of course, there's many different ways to do this soldering of the board. You could just do it on a breadboard, or you could solder it up nicely on a proto board, or even design a PCB. This I just found was the simplest, and it works pretty well. I haven't had any problems yet. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look at these little two pads. And what these do is they connect USB power to the input power. So if we're running a lot of servos, we want to separate this by cutting it with an X-Acto knife. And that will prevent the USB from powering the board, uh, particularly when we have a lot of servos drawing current. That would damage the USB port. So we're going to cut that. And now when we plug that Teensy into the computer, uh, it will not actually receive power. You'll have to provide your own power. I'll show you a way to get around that later if you would rather provide power to the Teensy, but just have a switch. But next, we're going to ground that outermost rail from the three pin headers, um, taking about 20, 22 gauge silicone wire, stripping it, tinning it. And we're going to solder that to the ground pin on the corner of the Teensy. Once we have a good connection on that, we can cut just a little bit because it just has to wrap around to that outermost uh, rail of ground pins that we uh, soldered together earlier. So I'm going to tin that, wrap it around, be very careful because it's a small piece. It's going to be really hot. Don't use your fingers. And that looks good. Next up, we're going to do the exact same for the power rail of the three pin headers. So I grabbed some wire, stripped it, tinned it. We're going to solder that to the power line on the other side of the board. We're going to make sure that's cut to length. And we're going to solder that to the power line, which is the innermost line that we soldered together earlier. And like I said earlier with the pads, what we can actually do instead is put a little SPST switch here between the servo line and the input power. And you can just switch that off if you have a lot of servos to prevent the servos from trying to draw through the USB. It's much safer. So that's that's your option for that. Next up, we're going to solder the IMU. And you're going to need four wires of the same length. And those are going to be soldered onto the VCC, ground, SCL, and SDA pins on the IMU breakout. Uh, the wires can be any length you want. Um, it's just to decouple the IMU from the actual flight controller assembly so you can mount it anywhere in the proper orientation on the vehicle. I like to keep my wires clean so I'll just take some shrink tubing and run that over all four wires down to the IMU and then I'll take the SCL SDA wires and uh, shrink tube those together as well as the ground and power wires together. So I'm just going to strip the SCL SDA wires make sure they have some shrink tubing over them after they're tinned and we're going to solder those to the two pin female headers that I prepared earlier. Now, if you don't have the female headers, you can cut up to the length that you want. You can also use uh, female JST connectors. Those will work just as fine. And make sure you have some shrink tube on there just to put over your solder joints, make it nice and clean. You'll thank yourself later. And of course, we're going to do that for the ground and power pins as well. And that completes the IMU assembly. So now we just need to plug the power and ground into any of those 
three power ground pins we created on the Teensy. And then the SDA pin of the IMU goes to pin 18 and SCL goes to pin 19 on the Teensy. And that completes the entire flight controller assembly. On the left side, you'll have outputs for ESCs and servos. And on the right side, you'll have inputs for your radio. And I'll show in a separate video how to hook the radio up and get that all calibrated. You can find more information on this default recommended hardware setup in the official Dreamflight VTOL documentation. Like all other things having to do with this project, if you can find a better way to do something, I highly recommend you to do that. I just want to be able to provide a good starting place for those of you that are new to Dreamflight VTOL. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this in the future. Thank you.